What's up, guys? This is Brave, and I am back to do a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, this show brought all the drama of this episode. This is season two, episode 11, and the episode is titled A Whole Lot of Drama. And I mean, Martell is a hot ass mess. We're just going to flat out say it just like that. But let me go ahead and start this uh, review off and recap at the top of the episode. So we basically start the episode off with the cast talking about the pandemic that we're going through, as well as Black Lives Matters. And I will say I did like that they even kind of highlighted the fact that Kimmy is a frontline worker, um, considering she is a nurse. And I can only imagine how her life is as a frontline worker, um, seeing people in and out of the hospital. Like, that's a lot to take on. So we next see Maurice. He's like giving this speech. And I'm like, wait, did he become a preacher or something? Because I don't recall him having that, you know, in the background that we've been watching this show. Nope. He was actually talking about um, how these black businesses can help each other in Huntsville. This was a town hall meeting and it looked like it re- it went really well. Um, you know, Kimmy said that she was super proud of him. So after the meeting, we have Kimmy, Maurice, Marcel, Letitia, and um destiny and what's that guy's name labaric i'm sorry but that name is terrible (laughs) his mama knows she was wrong for that um so yeah they're like standing in a group and they're talking about how the town hall meeting went well and one of them bring up how like this is like the the comeback group 2.0 and i'm like i don't want to hear mention of any type of comeback group because that went nowhere um, but Marceau, he does feel like, you know, they're building businesses and they're buying buildings. So they are doing something. So we go over to Melody. Um, she has moved to Atlanta briefly. She's not like permanently staying there, but she goes there to be with her brother, Marcus. So he starts to ask her about, you know, what's happening with her and Martell. And she's like, I'm going through the, the divorce. Um, she ends up telling her brother that uh, between her and Martell, whenever they would get into it, she would always be the one to leave the house because he always felt like he would stay in the house, um, which I feel like, sir, you know you're wrong for that. Like, usually the woman is the one who's staying in the house, especially considering she's the one that got cheated on. Um, she also talks about how while they were in this pandemic, he would leave the house and be going for hours and hours and hours. And she's like, where are you going during a pandemic? And I'm like, I, exactly. Because there's only one place where that man is going and it's to go be with that other woman. So Martell, you brought all this stuff on yourself. So, um, Melody goes on about how, you know, it's causing her kids to feel like they're stuck in the middle because they don't know if they want to be with their mom or their dad and they don't want to feel bad because they didn't choose the other parent. And she's like, you know, it's no fair to the kids. Um, you know, she didn't want her kids to have to go through their parents going through a divorce, but at the end of the day, she kept trying to make it work. It wasn't working. So she also said that she was not going to change her expectations or dumb down uh, her expectations of the person she's with. And I'm like, you know what, Melody? I know that's right. Because why should she tolerate Martell constantly cheating on her? Why should she tolerate herself being, she's being faithful while he out here in a four-year relationship and he got a baby on the way? Nope not doing it. She could do better than Martell. I'm sorry. I feel like in the beginning of this, this show, he felt like he was the hot shit. And what happened was Melody was the one who actually blew up. Melody is who we all paid attention to. Like, I'm sorry, but he has an ego and Martell is an asshole. So, um, her brother ends up asking her, you know, how will this affect the kids? And she's like, you know, well, I want the kids to stay in Huntsville. She wants them to stay comfortable where they already are. So she's like, 
he gonna have to leave. Martell is gonna have to leave. And her brother was like, well, if you need me to come down there with you to help you get his, his ass out as well as his stuff, I will come down there with you. I'm like, yes, brother. Go ahead and support your sister. So we get to Martell. He's at the house with the kids, and his mom comes over. I gave a side eye to he had those kids eating PB&J sandwiches on the floor. I mean, I get it, kids make a mess, but they could have sat at the table. Come on now. But anyways, his mom came over, and he's just going on and on about how he got to take care of these kids. And it's just so hard because it's just him. And his mom was like, well, that's a part of your job as a parent. And it's your responsibility. So he, you know, he goes on to tell his mom that he's getting a divorce. And she's like, well, I already know that all of this is your fault. <laughs> and, like, what are you going to do now that, you know, you have these kids uh, with a divorce? What are you going to do with them? And he's like, I'm going to get a nanny. And I'm like, so now you decide to get a nanny after all this time? Now you want to get a nanny? Okay, Martell. So, you know, uh, he basically tried to blame Mel for everything, like he always does. It's like, she wasn't taking care of me and all this stuff. And his mom was not going for Martel's BS. She saw right through him. She's like, no, you're just like your father. It didn't matter what Mel did. She could have, you know, been the greatest wife. You still was going to cheat. You were going to do whatever the hell you wanted to do. So, you know, he talks about him having four kids is tough. And his, his mom's like, well, that's what you wanted. Like, let's be honest. Even when um, Melody got pregnant with the last baby, like, Bartell was gung-ho ho about this because he wanted more kids. And listen, when you have four kids, you have to raise those four kids. Um we next see Letitia, y'all, she is at home doing her normal job, being a mom, cleaning the house, taking care of the household, while Marceau is the person who makes the money. So you already know, Marceau is probably happy as hell that Letitia ain't working no more and that she at home with those kids. So um, Marceau, he ends up uh, coming in and she's talking about how she needs to like set a schedule you know, to kind of balance all the kids and their learning as well as whatever she has going on. So Marcel talks about how he needs to hire assist an assistant because basically Letitia ain't there to be an assistant no more to him. And she's like, well, I need to hire a nanny. And out of nowhere, Letitia brings up the Holtz. And I'm like, why are we talking about the Holtz? At this point, y'all shouldn't even mention him this season, considering y'all don't like their asses. So... Marcel feels like Melody, she would have taken him back if it wasn't in the public eye. And then I don't even care about what Letitia had to say after that because she's like, well, you know, they brought it up or whatever. And I'm like, Letitia, it was already in the public. Like, once the information got out, she would have had to address it. What are you talking about? So, whatever. Um, we have Martel. He goes to Destiny's house. And at this point, I realize Martell's ass is literally going to show up on everybody's doorstep whining about how Mel did this and Mel did that. And I'm like, sir, if you don't get your ass somewhere else, on, like, because I mean, he was on a tour. OK, this episode making his rounds to everybody. So. At this point, he goes to Destiny and LeBaric's house, right? They just moved in together. They had, uh, she had her baby. And, you know, he just goes over there to tell her that, you know, me and Mel, we're getting a divorce. And then he talks about how uh, he can't take the verbal abuse from Melanie and how, you know, basically the sex got better, but that was it. He just couldn't take her attitude and all this stuff. And then he tells Destiny, oh, yeah, because you need to choose me over Mel because you know me for over 20 years. Excuse me? Why does she have to make a choice? Why can't she be friends with both y'all? Like... 
you cannot control who someone else is friends with. So at that point, um, you know, he goes on to say that, you know, because me and Mel, we're actually equal. You know, she tries to make it seem like I did all of this, but, you know, she's out here doing stuff as well. And Destiny, at that point, I realized that I kind of like Destiny because she saw right through Martel's bullshit in this scene because he was really trying to make it seem like Mel was just out here doing all types of dirt. But it's like, dude, even if she did, her dirt still happened after you cheated on her and continued to have a relationship with the woman that you cheated on her with. And also, you're having a baby with that woman. Like, are you kidding me? So, you know, uh, Destiny, like I said, she wasn't here for the BS. And she's like, you know, I understand Mel. I understand how, you know, Mel is doing her own thing. And at this point, I just really gave a side eye because Martell is going on and on and Destiny continues to see Mel's side. And he basically told her that, you know, see, this is how you would get cheated on. And I'm like, but you just said this, you and her were friends for 20 years. And this is the thoughts that come to your head that she would get cheated on. Because she understands how Mel feels. Are you kidding me? See, Martell is just such an asshole. Because if someone doesn't see things his way, he gets on the defensive mode and he just attacks the person. Rude as hell. So, we then get Letitia and Marceau. They over here talking at the uh, the place that they were they were building it last se- last season. Well. Not last season, but the uh, before we went on this hiatus <laughs> this season. Um, and now it looks like it's almost done. And they're just talking about how Kamala Harris became the vice president. And Marceau, he says that, you know, I didn't realize that, like, basically he didn't realize that it was a big deal that a woman became vice president because he never even looked at it that way. And I'm like... You're a misogynistic, egotistical ass. Like, Marceau is honestly, he's still one of the worst husbands. I feel like the only husband that is even worth mentioning that could be good is Maurice. I mean, he still got his shit, but, like, he is not as bad as Marceau and Martel. So, after this, uh, they're, you know, still talking. And who shows up? Knock, knock, knock. Here comes Martel, because he on a tour, to come talk to them. So he starts up about how, you know, he's just trying to salvage whatever friendship that can be salvaged. And that, you know, when they were basically getting into it, he was like, oh, well, you know, why are the Scots coming at us when we're not coming at them? But he didn't know what his wife was doing, like, behind his back. And I'm like, you are acting like... Mel was the only one who had something to say about the Scots. You had your own issues with the Scots. You had your own drama with Marceau. Like, you yelling about him having 20 other women, that was all you. That had nothing to do with Melody. Come on now. So, Letitia is like, you know, let me stop you right there because you had your own things to say. You try to mess up our marriage when you mention the 20 women. So, basically... Marceau, he then, you know, chimes in about how he was hurt that his friend said things about him. And Martel is like, yeah, vice versa. And, you know, I guess they were expecting an apology, but I was done once Martel said, oh, you know, me being here is like enough of an apology or whatever words he used. But basically, he was not saying, I apologize for trying to fuck up y'all family even though your shit was already fucked up. Um, We next have Melody. She is back in Huntsville, and she goes to see her girl, Destiny. And Destiny, she, you know, like I said, she just had a baby, so she plans on having them work out. And, you know, she's trying to get her body back together. Um, So Mel gets there, they work out, and they start talking about how basically... Uh, women have to compromise so much more than men do. 
which I absolutely agree with. Um, men will do the bare fucking minimum and act like they doing a whole lot for you. And they really not. So, um, Melody ends up asking her about, you know, how is LeBaric with the baby? And basically she said that he don't really help her. And Melody is like, these, y'all just got married. Like, y'all should not be having all these red flags. Like, even though currently her and Martell are at odds, it wasn't always that way, especially not in the beginning of their relationship. So, you know, they just have this conversation. And I like their friendship because Melody keeps it real with Destiny. And, you know, she's like, Um, Because Destiny was like, oh, I think he's like checking out sometimes. And she's like, Melody's like, well, no, he needs to check his ass back in. Ain't no checking out. And I'm like, agreed. Um, So then Melody, she ends up talking about how, you know, her anniversary with Martell, it just kind of came and went. Because at this point, they're at odds. What anniversary? So he get his ass on the phone and calls Mel and it's like, why you didn't uh, tell me happy anniversary? And she's like, first of all, that's that arrogant, conceited shit that he be doing. And you push me out the out of the state. You push, you push me out the city. You know, you push me out of my home and you're expecting for me to tell you happy anniversary. If Martel don't get the fuck on. So she ends up going on about how, like, you know. She was with him when he, nobody basically wanted him. Talking about he had crooked teeth. He had a receded hairline. But she still loved him. And um, Destiny is like, you know, I think that these men, they forget that when nobody wanted you, we done groomed you up, you know, made you look like something, made you be somebody. Then they try to turn their back on women. And that is a pet peeve of mine baby so we get to uh martel and melody and melody comes strolling in with her suitcase and you can already tell she ain't with the shit so she comes strolling in and martel is like oh do you need help with that suitcase and she's like no but do you need help getting your shit out (laughs) i cracked up a little bit at that part so, um, the kids ends up, end up coming down to see their mom and they are super happy to see Melody. Um, she said it had been two weeks since she's seen the kids because it was his two weeks. And I mean, you can tell those kids love their mom. So they send the kids away and then we go ahead and get this conversation started because Martel has not moved all his stuff out. So Martel has the bright idea that What the parents can do is switch every two weeks, but the kids are going to stay at the main house. So I'm assuming that they have like a a separate rental property that, you know, for two weeks, he'll stay there while she stays with the kids. And then they'll switch and he'll go stay at the rental property while she's with, I mean, well, whatever I just said, she's with the kids. And I'm like, who the hell does that? Your lazy ass just don't want to move the fuck out because once you move out, you know, it's for real, for real. You not coming back. So Martel is like, well, I'm going to move out or whatever. I'm going to get all my stuff out tomorrow. And Mel is like, you a lie. She already know her husband. She already know that he going to try to drag his damn feet. But she's like, no, you're not dragging your feet on this the same way you've been dragging your feet on this divorce. So that opens up a whole nother can of worms because once they start talking about that divorce, and he talked about he didn't agree with some of the things that were in the uh, divorce agreement. Like, he did not want to do homeschooling for the kids. And I did kind of laugh when she was like, why? Because that's taking too much time from you? I mean, if we really want to be technical with the way this pandemic has turned out, shit, everybody doing homeschooling, you just have a teacher on the screen, but you kids are still at home and you are there as well. So Martel's petty ass decided to rebuttal the homeschooling. And you know what his solution is? For him to get full custody of the kids. Keep in mind, he just complained to his mama how, oh my God, it's so hard having to take care of these four kids. Oh, but you're trying to get full custody from your wife. Okay, sir. So 
Nell is like, I will knock the fuck out of you. <laughs> and I feel like she said that with all her heart because there's no way you're going to try to take her kids from her. Full time? You want full custody? Are you kidding me? So Melody is like, first of all, I'm not seeing that paperwork. And he's like, well, it's getting, it's getting sent to you. And, you know, he goes on about how um, she basically needs to chill. And Mel, at this point, she's on 100. Like, she's pissed off. And she's like, oh, wait a minute. So you basically are trying to take full custody of my kids while you sitting up here texting me how I want to have our family back. And, you know, you don't want a divorce. Because Martell plays fucking games. So he does this stunt where he's like, well, why are you being so hostile? I'm sorry, but I I hate when men, they sit up here and they will say some foul shit to you. And then when you raise your voice and you are like, you're pissed off. They're like, they do this lower tone and they're like, why are you acting like that? Why are you being so aggressive? Why are you being so hostile? Because you fucking brought me, you brought me to that point with your raggedy ass. So he does that to Mel and she's like, I've tried to be fair with your ass since the beginning. So Martell is like, well, it's because you want everything to go your way. And she's like, what the hell is going my way? Nothing is going my way. And honestly, she's right. Nothing is exactly going Mel's way. Because if she had her way, she would have her husband, who was solely her husband, and not out here philandering and doing whatever the hell else with this other woman, like having another child. Um, You know, they would all be in one household. Yeah, Melody is not exactly getting everything that she wanted. So again... You know, she's pissed off. She's like, I can't believe that you would even say that to me. And at that point, this conversation, it wasn't going nowhere. She's just like, get the fuck out. Like, just get out. I don't want to see you get out. So he decides to say, see, I don't want my kids to be around that. And I'm like, oh, oh, a person who's fed up with your bullshit? Excuse me? Like, he got the nerve He got his nerve. So Mel is like, I don't want my kids around that. And then she brings up the fact that he has brought his kids around his other woman. She's like, I don't want my kids around her. And then I guess he brought up some guy that Mel is supposed to be talking to. Hell, good for Mel. Because after all the shit that Martell has put her through, she deserves better. So... She basically says, no, I never had anything with this person that you just named. So, I mean, in her mind, she's like, listen, I'm just friends with that person. I ain't out here having another baby with him, okay? So, that's pretty much where the episode left off with her telling him to get out. And, my God, this season looks like it is going to be good. I am ready for it. Um, Let me know what you guys thought about this episode. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.